In this video, I want to briefly discuss the nature of language and the use of language, effective use of language, in public speaking situations. So let's start off by talking about what we mean by language. Well, language is, in a simple definition, a symbolic system of written or spoken words used to communicate messages. So it's important to note that it's symbolic. Language is symbolic. It doesn't come down from on high. It just represents ideas, and, and it's, it could be either written or spoken. And we use it to communicate messages, but it, it's just representative representations of an idea or an object, right? Language is also powerful, though. Language is very powerful. Words have power, both positive and negative power. We all know that, you know, the expression, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. What a load of crap, right? I mean, words do hurt. They also lift up. They also do wonderful things. They also explain. They also clarify things. They give us a common representation of different objects and different things. So language is very, very powerful. Language is also a part of creating our social reality. Uh, we you know, define somebody, for example, that we can define their age by how old they are, by what type of language they use, right? What kind of slang are they using? Are they a part of this group or a part of that group? We can determine that also by what language they're using, right? Not just are they speaking English or Chinese or some other language, but, you know, what words in English are they using? Are they using contemporary slang, meaning they're maybe young and hip or whatever, or are they using, you know, slightly older expressions that, uh, that may date them a little bit? But it, and it also creates our social reality, and this idea of what's good and what's bad. We determine that through language and through common language use. Language is also used to evoke emotion, because every word has these different types of meaning, these, these connotative meanings that are, are not defined by the word itself, but defined by how we feel about that. And so language can bring out emotions, and, and certain words uh, kind of trigger certain emotions, right? So if we think about emotive language on this continuum or on this spectrum right, that goes on forever. And we could have words that are positive, that have a positive connotation to them. Words like courage and freedom and hero. These are positive words. They have a positive connotation. They bring a good feelings in us. When we hear somebody's courageous, we hear the word freedom, it feels good, right? When we hear somebody's a hero, that's a very positive connotation. It's a good thing to be a hero, right? So we have words that have a positive connotation to them. We also have words that have a negative connotation that attached to them, right? Fair or not, that have a negative connotation attached to them. Things like oppression, fool, hate. These are all words that would carry a negative connotation that when you hear them, you just get a negative feeling about it and pulls out a, you know, something's not right about these things. We don't like oppression. When somebody calls somebody else a fool, it's a, it's a negative thing, right? Nobody likes to be called a fool for the most part. And, and hate is a, has a strongly connotative uh, meaning attached to it. So <clears throat> language can have this negative connotation. It goes on both ends of the spectrum. Sometimes though, language is neutral. It doesn't have any real connotation for most people, right? So if we just said something, that would be a fairly neutral word. Or computer for most people is a, is a neutral word, unless you have a really bad experience with, with computers or a really good experience. It's just a thing. It's an object, right? Same with telephone. It's just a, a thing. It doesn't really have a connotation one way or the other. Uh, other times, things are right in the middle. They have this mixed connotation that can go either way. You talk about socialism or marijuana or vegetables. <clears throat> For some people, vegetables are amazing. They love vegetables. They think they're the, the greatest thing ever. And then you have people like me who avoid them at all costs, do everything I can to not eat vegetables, right? has a negative connotation for me and a very positive connotation for others. The same with marijuana. I mean, depending on your view of that drug, you know, some people have a positive relationship with it and connotation, you know, think of it in a positive light. Others think of it in a very negative light. Others are, are neutral. So it could be anywhere along that spectrum, these mixed, uh, mixed words could be. So language, though, evokes this emotion. And we need to be careful when choosing language and understanding that it does have the power to pull out and evoke these emotions. So what can we do to use language effectively, specifically as it relates to public speaking? Well, first of all, we can use simple language. The audience is just going to be hearing what we're saying. They're not going to have the written word in front of them and be able to go back and review it a bunch of times. So we need to use language that they can pick up on immediately and relate to immediately and remember easily. So we want to use the simplest possible language that we can. That doesn't mean dumb things down, but we need to be cautious not to use terms and language that are going to go over the audience's head or make it harder for them to understand or harder for them to recall later on. So we want to use simple language whenever possible. We want to personalize our language. Every audience is different. 
The makeup of that audience is different. We need to know our audience. That goes back to audience analysis, which you can go back and review that video if you need to. But, uh, but so every audience is different. We need to personalize our language to them and specifically use words that will be relatable to them and understandable by them. We want to usually avoid jargon and slang. Typically, we want to avoid these things. Now, jargon is uh, words that are language that is specific to a field, so it's, it's specifically related to that that field of study or that job or whatever it is, or that that club, that group. It has a specific meaning within that context that isn't you know widely known necessarily uh, throughout general audiences. So we want to avoid jargon because it's going to be difficult for under, for audiences to understand. We typically want to avoid slang as well or informal language. We want to keep as a speaker. It'll affect our credibility, but it also affects the people. You know, some people in the audience may not understand, may not be familiar with that slang. So we want to typically avoid these things unless, again, we know that these would be appropriate for that audience. So we want to personalize our language. So if we're talking to a specific group, if we're talking to a group of engineers, then we can use engineering terms fairly confidently, right? If we're talking to a group of uh, teenagers, maybe we throw some slang in there because it's something that'll be more relatable to them. Now, that's if it doesn't sound ridiculous coming from you, as it would probably from me sound ridiculous. So, so I would not use a lot of slang regardless of who I was talking to. But we need to uh, be aware of these things, though. And typically, we want to avoid them unless we know that it's going to have a positive impact on that audience and be personalized for that specific audience. We want to be careful with idioms. You know, in English, we have a lot of idioms, things like uh, kick the bucket, right? When we say kick the bucket, you know, we know that something has died. You know, native English speakers and people familiar with the language <coughs> will know that something has died, something has passed away. Um, we usually don't you know, use it in terms of talking about a person because it's kind of insensitive. But some, somebody who's just learning English and not really familiar with English, that would be a difficult thing for them to understand. Kick the bucket because it has no discernible relationship with the idea of dying. You know, most language is symbolic and directly re reflects an object or an idea. Kick the bucket doesn't, unless you are already inside and are familiar with that. So we want to be careful using idioms like kick the bucket and more than one way to skin a cat. I mean, that's going to gross somebody out who's not familiar with that expression or familiar with, you know, the English language. It's, it's, it just doesn't directly reflect what we're talking about unless you already have you know, the inside knowledge of that idiom. So we want to be cautious with idioms. We want to use concrete and precise language. Uh, language that keeps the audience all on the same page. Concrete language is very specific, it's very defined, it's not abstract, it's it's very uh, specific to what you're talking about, very precise, and it keeps the audience all together on the same page. Right? So we want to use very concrete and precise language whenever possible. We want to use stylized language, again, language that, uh, that, that is nice to hear, so to speak, on the, on the part of the audience, and, and that's appropriate for that topic and appropriate for that audience, and just style your language specifically to them. Use correct grammar. Again, this comes back to credibility. If you're not using correct grammar when you're speaking, then um, the audience may have concerns about your credibility. So be aware of connotations. We talked about emotive language. We talked about how language has different meanings um, for, for different people. So, so there's the, the denotative definition of that word, which is the dictionary definition, which is we're all together. But, but that word will also, every word will also pull out a different feeling, a different meaning, and evoke different emotions uh, for each audience member. So we want to be aware of connotations and, and use words wisely in that regard. We want to avoid vocal fillers like um and uh as much as possible. Uh, even things like like, saying like, like over and over again, like this or like that, can be you know considered kind of a vocal filler. So we want to avoid anything <coughs> overly repetitious in that regard. We want to avoid powerless language. We're talking here about things like hedges and tag questions and qualifiers. Those are all things that cause people to, to question your grasp on the topic and your authority on that topic and authority to speak about such things. So you want to avoid different things like that and, and speak with confidence, speak with clarity, and just really give the impression of authority, give the idea that you are in charge of what you're talking about. You are You have a handle on that topic. We want to avoid cliches. <clears throat> they're just overused, and they're not they're not very effective with an audience, and they get, get lost in the shuffle, so to speak, of the audience's brain. They just kind of get shuffled aside. We want to avoid dated language. Use language that's uh, that's contemporary, that's current. Use expressions that the audience is going to relate to, and uh, but avoid that kind of dated language that may not uh, be applicable anymore. As far as ethics go, we want to use gender 
neutral language when we're, when we're speaking. So we want to avoid things like the generic he. We say things like, you know, we're talking about a surgeon. We, we don't want to say, well, you know, unless we're talking about some th somebody specific, if we're just talking about surgeons in general. We say a surgeon, uh, he might do this or he might do that. We're assuming then that all surgeons are general, all surgeons are male, and of course they're not. So uh, we want to avoid using the generic he in the same way as much as possible. Avoid using what we call man-linked terms like mankind, um, just because they're again they they give a male-centric you know, kind of centering to everything in the world. So instead of mankind, we can say humankind, or we can just say people of the world, things like that. So we can avoid gender-specific language in that regard. We want to use culturally sensitive or sensitive language for speaking to a group, even if we're not speaking to a specific specific group. We want to use terms that are culturally sensitive and uh, and and just are aware of the fact that we live in a multicultural world, and that uh, that that's an important thing. Avoid profanity as much as possible, unless you're talking to the you know the cursing club or something like that. You really want to avoid profanity. It's going to have an impact on your credibility. And it's going to put off some of the audience members, and it's just unnecessary. There's so many other words in the English language that you can use without resorting to profanity that, uh, that it's just not necessary. I want to avoid exaggeration then as well. Be be an ethical speaker is 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 honest and is you know, straightforward and represents their ideas accurately and purposefully and intentionally. So avoid exaggeration um, at all costs as a speaker. If you have questions about language and its use in public speaking or any other matter related to public speaking, feel free to shoot me an email. I'm always happy to respond to emails, and I'd be happy to talk about with you about language or anything else related to public speaking. In the meantime, happy communicating.